This is my Olympus EP1 from early 2010, about a year ago in 2022. Its image stabilization broke mechanically, so I took it apart. My fix didn't last very long, so I'm disassembling it again now for a new workaround that will hopefully last longer. Ignoring the scratches on the sensor, you may be able to see that it's slightly off to the right and a bit closer to the bottom than it should be. This causes vignetting uh, with some lenses and I want to try to get rid of it. For keeping track of all the screws, I'm sticking them on cardboard with a strip of rolled up painter's tape and just right next to them where I took them from. If I was doing this for the first time, I would just start taking out the mo most obvious screws and repeat. In this case, there are two screws around the side door covering the USB port. Then there are four screws around the battery compartment. Don't take out the three screws around the tripod mount. And then three more screws on the other side of the bottom cover. And this one below the strap connection on the left. The screws for the hot shoe are hidden under this black metal bracket, which you can slide out like this. Then you can get to the screws and take them out. Lift out the hot shoe and its frame. And this reveals two more screws facing the back of the camera. You can probably leave this piece in, but it might fall out later by itself and get, get lost. Meanwhile, the battery door is loose. And you can also take the entire bottom cover off. Take note of these two rectangular spaces and this plastic piece making up the hinge. Now the two halves of the outer shell can be pulled off. This reveals two more screws holding the top cover in place with these springy tabs. Now we can start loosening the display panel with these screws on the left edge. On both sides there are screws in front of the strap connections, which also hold the top cover in place. On the right, there's this metal strip with th three more screws. You probably don't need to take these out, but if you do, note that the last one is slightly different. This one. Taking out this door is also optional. Now just two more screws on the right of the display panel.
and the top cover comes off. Uh, also take out the exposure adjustment button and the silicon base that it sits on. Now the entire back panel comes loose, but it's still attached with a flat cable connector and one screw. Time to stretch your legs and take a deep breath because this is where it gets complicated. The large metal plate under all these ribbon cables holds the sensor assembly, so first let's take out the screws we can see. And this one with the springy tabs, probably a ground connection. and one over here on the left. There's one more screw hiding under the ribbon cables on the top right corner. These ribbon cables need to be disconnected except the one on the left that was unnecessary. These pieces of tape keep the ribbon cables in place, so they will have to be removed. This blue tape reveals another ribbon co connector, which is especially fiddly because it's not supported from below. Bit of a jump here because my recording stopped. Uh, the sensor assembly can now be folded over on its back to be worked on. Notice the long spring for the horizontal stabilization and the short one for vertical. The mechanism works against these when it does. This is what the horizontal IBIS gear looked like originally. There's a small nylon cogwheel on the motor axle. These shrink over time and I believe all of these will eventually crack and stop working. I took out the broken cogs last time so the larger gear wheels spin freely now. Like this. Of course, the problem with this is that any vibration during transport now lets the spring take over and drag the sensor to one end of its range of movement. This one is now in the middle of its range, as you can see equal amounts of space around this part that says 2. I decided to fix this in place with a piece of something like blue tech, except it's not blue, uh, because it's not permanent. If I ever find exact replacement cogs, this can all be undone quite easily. Same thing for the other axis, adjusts it to the middle of its range and then fixed into place. Right, now we need to put this thing back together. There are four pairs of washers that fell out, each with a flat one and a slightly thicker one. These need to be put back in place before we can put in the screws or the sensor's flange distance won't be right and the focus will be off.
Stacking these washers is extremely fiddly and they keep falling deep into the body of the camera. Now we can carefully fold the sensor assembly back onto our stacked washers and quickly put in the screws before any of the washers decide otherwise. With the sensor fixed again, let's check if it is really centered now. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Time to reconnect the ribbon cables. This is the fiddly one that's not supported from below, so you need to hold it between your fingers to close it. And putting all the tape back into place so that none of the cables come loose or crease when we put the display panel back on. Let's not forget this screw with the two springy tabs in the top right corner. By the way, this is the inside of the display panel. You may be interested in these screws if your control wheels start acting up and you want to hit them with deoxid. Mine did, but I already fixed that last year. The only other noteworthy bit of reassembly is figuring out which way these pieces need to go in so that the battery door springs open when you unlatch it. Right, back in with the last couple of screws. Now let's test it. Note that the camera still detects the IBIS as broken and it'll keep flashing in red even if you turn off IS. But at least the sensor is centered now and for daylight photography this camera is totally fine. <laughs> 